Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, July 3rd, 2017 at 7 p.m. And our clerk of council, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, members of council. Uh, let's start off with our rule. Uh, Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Lethley. Here. And Mr. Kraybacher. Here. That's close. I missed it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Moving on to invocation by Councilman Aaron Lighty. Dearly Father, we thank you for the opportunity for us to come together. Lord, we just ask that you uh, bless the city, bless the workers, bless the police force and the fire department, Lord. And uh, just bless everyone up here in council tonight and just guide us to make the best decision to better the city. And just help everything we do glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance. We use the flag here. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States. Mr. Rick Lowry. Abstain due to absence. <clears throat> Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Abstain. And Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Four, two, one to two abs to uh, two abstains. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, moving on. Communications done tonight. You did it wrong. As always, if anyone has any cell phones tonight, please just be kind and turn them down or turn them on vibrant. We appreciate that, please. And moving on to Mr. Bridges and Manager's report for the evening. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and members of the audience. Would like to share with you the city manager. Session needed to discuss adding online water payments. So we do got a lot of information to share with council. Um, however, I think it's best if we involve our citizens and council to see how we best go forward. Uh, Mr. Reynolds is not here. I, this was on the last agenda as well, so maybe next council when we have a full meeting, we can definitely get that set. But it is something that we do need to prioritize because um, we are we've been waiting a while to get it done. We got all the stuff we need, but we do want some guidance from our citizens and council on how to best proceed. Um, fire hydrant report. Um, at the last council meeting, um, there was a discussion about our fire hydrants. Um, and I said I uh, asked Mr. Kiko to give us a slight report on that. That report is attached. If you had time to read it, great. If you have any questions on that, myself and Mr. Kiko would be happy to answer the report. I got a question. Sure. Um, where does the money come from you know, to, to do this? Does this come out of the water? Does it come out of the fire department? Does it come out? The, the hydro portion comes out of the water department fund, and then the, the specific stores, con, uh, stores connection comes out of the fire department fund. Okay, and then the hydrant comes out of the fire department fund too? Or? I'm fire sorry, the hydrant itself? No, the hydrant, the barrel, and everything comes out of the water, water department. The water department, okay. Yeah, okay, that's what I need. Mean. Thank you. Oh, did they budget for this, by the way? Did they budget, you know, for the hydrants? We, we budget, uh, I think, this year for five or so. Okay. Thank you. That is all I have for the manager's report. Wow. Can you make, can you make something up? <laughs> um, well, we do have a new hire, Angela. I didn't put her on here. She did start early in the week, but she'll be actually at our next council meeting. So I'll put that on there. But 
Yeah. On the, uh, I know you, we don't want to get into it too deep tonight, but is everything look positive on the online water bill pay? Everything? Um, yeah, we'll discuss more in detail when it when it's incurred. I think it will work out, but there will be some fees that we need to address okay. for swiping the credit card, and that's why I think it's best to get council involved. Great. All right. Thank you. Council, any questions for the city manager tonight? No, not tonight. All right. Moving on to comments from the members of the public. Anyone in the public or Pam? I wasn't oh. here, so. No, the discussion was that we take the full money we got and put it towards our debt we owed. And since we already started the refinancing process, we couldn't take that chunk of change and apply it to it since we already started. So what we're going to do is sock that money into a interest savings account, continue on making our bills. When we refinance, we have a new call out date in 2020 that we can essentially do what we've done over again. So we're going to wait to 2020, let that money get some interest on it, and then refinance and put that big chunk towards the down payment on the debt debt. But you didn't check to see. Uh, I, mean, I can't remember who asked if it could just all be applied at once. And he said, "That's that." There was a fee to do that, or whether it didn't warrant going into discussion because we could not apply that amount to what we already tried to refinance. The paperwork was already started, so we couldn't stop what we're doing. Say, let's take this X amount of dollars and put it towards the debt that we've already started the paperwork to refinance. So there's a clause that says we can't pay ahead. Yes, you cannot sit there and put that on there. What you're doing at that point in time is you'd have to start the refinancing process all over again because you're now refinancing a different dollar amount. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's actually what we're doing is we saved $116,000 over the course of this refinancing effort. So we've already saved a good amount of money on our Twin Creeks payment specific um, and our other 2010 various purpose. Um, so we're all, it's almost like we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. We're going to let us see the savings, and in 2020, again, we're going to refinance. That's when we can pull that X amount of dollars we have out, plus the interest it has accrued, and then put that for a massive payment, and then refinance based off what's left. But all that money will actually go for the debt. If council directs it to go that way, that is a council decision. I mean, it was voted on, it would all go towards the debt. Well, it is going towards the debt. Yeah, it will eventually go towards the debt. But only for that, right? As long as council keeps it like that. Okay. Because I remember our social security was supposed to be sort of that way too. Well, <laughs> yeah. Ma'am, what was your name and Jim Smith. 219 Princess. Get that. J A N E L. One. And now that we're talking about that, I do have a bunch of things um, that are summarized for council when it comes to those um, refinancing. However, I have a few questions for Colleen and also the uh, company who did it. So um, I was going to have it released today, but I'm not going to release that until I have a few more questions answered. Great. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right. Okay. Thank you. Very quick. All right. Moving on to committee reports and none tonight. So we'll drop down the resolution. One with, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. One with action tonight. Mr. Kitko. Resolution 17-13R, uh, Introduction, Public Hearing and Action tonight. A resolution amending Resolution 17-11R, adding a financial signatory due to a Scrivener's error. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move we accept <coughs> Resolution 17-13. First and second by Mr. Lethley. Mr. Lethley was second. Okay. An explanation of this resolution. Um, this is the same one that we did uh, introduce and vote on last council meeting. <coughs> However, uh, we did spell Vicky's name wrong, so we do need to get that correct. Um, that Council, any other questions? I just have one. Mr. Lefley? What's a scrivener? Scrivener is just an honest mistake. Okay. From the person who wrote it. It's a great tool to have. It is a real one. It is fantastic. Oh. Council, any other questions? I did. I did. <laughs> Call for the vote. Are you ready, Mr. Kitko? I didn't thought it was one either. <laughs> oh, that was a uh, Mr. Lighty? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Craybocker? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Passes six to zero. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Kicker, when you start.
start your you know, voting, you start the person after the second. He can actually start it anywhere he wants to. <laughs> yeah, but he's their own. Yeah. Pardon? I mean, don't worry. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Just go on. <laughs> All right, so that one passes. Yeah. All right. Moving on to uh, ordinances. Three with action tonight, one for introduction. Mr. Kitko, when you're ready, please. Ordinance 17 20, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2018, and submitting same to the auditor of the Clark County, Ohio. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lowry, motion to adopt ordinance 17 20. Second. That was Mr. Lighty, right? Yeah. Yeah. And explanation of this ordinance this is our yearly ordinance that we do. Um, every year we have to submit to, the, to Clark County a tax budget. Basically, what that says is we think we're going to get this much amount. They come back and say, no, you're probably going to get this much amount. These numbers always change. This is the first of many hoops that you do have to jump through to approve your final operating budget. Council, any questions? When you're ready, Mr. Kitko, you can call for the vote, please. Mr. Leslie? Yes. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. And Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Passes six to zero. Ordinance 17-21, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding for donated Marks radio units for the New Carlisle Police Division. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jim over here. Mr. Lockley, sorry. Mr. Jim. You can call me Leafly. Leafly? Yeah. Oh, I was calling you Leafly. <laughs> <laughs> I move you adopt ordinance 17-21. I second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, this ordinance and the following one after this is fantastic news. Uh, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources actually are, uh, get, are uh, providing some very cheap in the forms of zero dollars cost to get Mark's radios. Uh, these radios cost anywhere between, depending on the type of getting, four to six thousand dollars or eight to ten thousand dollars. Our fire department is getting eight of them at no cost. Um, so this is a fantastic program that we're graciously accepted into. Uh, we will have to pay a ten dollar per month uh, unit, per month per unit fee, but that's standard no matter the bottom or anything, and uh, a, a programming fee of fifty dollars per mobile unit as well, or thirty five for, for a portable unit. But in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, this is saving our fire department a lot of money. So we're very thankful for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources for doing this for us and all the some other cities throughout Ohio. Council, any questions? Mr. Lowry, do we have all we need now, or, or is there still a need for more, more radios? Ooh, I want to say this puts us in a good position, but I might I want to say we'll probably need a few more as the years go on. Um, okay. These are not new radios. They're, they're hand-me-downs. However, they still have some shelf life left, sure. and they still will work after that shelf life, but we always need to keep in the back of our mind the new equipment that we can get our fire and any safety okay. position. No, I would not. I would just wonder sure. if we needed any more if, or if this was going to take us through for a while. So. No, I think it'll help us out for a while, but okay. eventually we'll probably need someone. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, Mr. Mayor. Mr. I think Mr. Lindsay asked this last time, but those radios still can't communicate with the police, correct? Uh, these, I think, will. If they're on the same, they can switch a... They talk about dial or tone or... or Station. Mr. Lindsay would probably be able to answer this a lot better. My, from my understanding on the answer to this question, the sheriff's department has to give our department permission because it's a legal type thing, and only probably only the command or the mobile units can have that capability. The handheld portables for like the firefighters or any paramedic, whatever, probably would not have that capability, but the engine or the medic could have. If she agrees to it. To select apparatus. I, I believe so, yes. Okay, which makes sense from a public safety standpoint. Right. But not, not give that privilege to everyone because it is a police line. Right. Correct. Okay. 
Well, it says it in our minutes. If, if anybody wants to see it, you know, exactly what you said. It says it the same okay. thing in our oh, minutes. Yeah. yeah, it says the same thing, so. Okay. All right, any other questions? I said it right there. When you're ready, Mr. Kiko. Uh, Mr. Kraybacher? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. And Mr. Lethley? Yes. Six to zero, pass. Moving down to Ordinance 17-22, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding for the, donate, for the donated March radio units for New Carlisle Fire and EMS divisions. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Motion to adopt Ordinance 17-22. Second. Second by Mr. Lighty. Close second with Mr. Lindsay there. Who had, who had the second? <laughs> I did. Mr. Okay. Lighty. <laughs> and an explanation of this ordinance, this is piggybacked off the one we just approved. This one, however, is for our fire in the EMS division. Um, they won't get nearly as much. I want to say they're getting four way radios compared to the um, eight for the fire in the EMS. Council, any questions? When you're ready, Mr. Kiko, if you would, please. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mayor Lauer. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighting. Yes. And Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Passes six to zero. <laughs> Ordinance 17-23, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on July 17, 2017. An ordinance changing certain residential setback requirements to allow for front porch additions and or expansions. Can I have two seconds? Sure. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. A uh, little explanation and the background behind this particular ordinance coming up. I've been the planning director here for, since April 2012. I cannot tell you how many times somebody has put in a permit to expand their front porch or to even build a front porch on their house. And nine times out of ten, you have to immediately send them to the Board of Zoning Appeals to get a variance. Right now, our setback says 25 feet from the back of the sidewalk to the closest part of your house. Well, back in the day when our city adopted our zoning code, what they think failed to realize is that everyone is already at 25 feet. So the moment that you wanted to put a little deck on your front porch or you wanted to expand your deck already there, you had to jump through these hoops to get it done. And I have never once seen the BZA case get denied. So it's almost like we're putting our citizens through this hoop. And then they have to pay $125 on top of it to get it, just to get to a yes. So what I'm proposing, if council approves it, is we keep that 25 foot setback because you do want that there. But what we're going to do is allow for a 10 foot projection into the front yard. So if you wanted to add a 10 by 10 onto your front porch, you can enjoy your property as long as there's no health safety or issues going on with that. Um, I was speaking to a resident about that and I had happened to get a phone call from Councilman Reynolds. Um, told him what I was out doing and he supported the ordinance. But again, we're just making our citizens jump through the hoops. You know, if we still keep that 10 foot projection in there, you'll have 15 feet back, you'll still have ample room to see. And it's no different than someone who puts four cars in their driveway and you can't see down it anyway. You know, so I think it would be very um, a good gesture to our citizens to say, hey, we're not here to tell you can't enjoy your property, and we're definitely not here trying to get an extra $125 out of you just to go through the BCA. So that's a little bit of a history of background about this. I work in this field every day, so it kind of makes real good sense to me, but I did want to take an opportunity to explain it to people who don't deal with this every day. But we do really do put a burden on some of our citizens by making them do this. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lowry has a I have one question, and I'm all for it. I think it's great. My only question is, and you can probably just answer this, if someone was to extend 10 feet, could it say it was a deck? Could it possibly cover the water shutoff now? There's a possibility, and we do have some close ones. We would just, there'd be certain situations where if they would elect maybe to remove their valve. Okay. I mean, we still have it to the valve. Okay. But yeah. There, there's, there's ways to work around that. Okay. That's my only concern. I think it's a great ordinance, but I just want to ask about it. Definitely valid. Yeah. Council, any questions or comments on that? 
Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Sure. Um, also, moving down to other business. Under other business, uh, we have Congressman Warren Davidson uh, will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. City offices will be closed tomorrow, Tuesday, July 4th for the 4th of July holiday. Uh, there's a couple items that are not on your agenda that uh, we're at a request to add. A crime Watch meeting Wednesday, July 12th, 6.30 p.m. At, at here at the Smith Park Shelter House. And the last item is the National Night Out, August 1st, New Carlisle Church of the Brethren parking lot, and that's at 219 North Main Street. Okay, thank you. And I think that is all I have for the other Just business. Time on that, Mr. Uh, not sure on time. Yeah. For what? National Night Out. What? Uh, that starts like soon after work, I think 6 o'clock. Don't quote me. It, it's a long event, but I think it starts around 5 or 6. It might have started earlier than that. Didn't they have the main parking lot last year? I, I yeah. Think so I think it started out. Is it six? Yeah. Is it six? six, 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 six. <laughs> Maybe I was there earlier helping set up then. They were setting up there about 4.35. Gotcha. Let's <laughs> uh, I think we need to excuse Mr. Reynolds. So I need to excuse Mr. Reynolds for going. I second. <clears throat> Mr. Craybacher, second. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Any discussion or questions? When you're ready. Uh, Mr. Lighty? Mm. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Kraybacher? I wonder where he's at. <laughs> Yes. No discussion. <laughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes, sir. And Mr. Lindsay? Yes. <laughs> he has been excused. Also, real quick, before we adjourn, I just wanted to uh, uh, say thank you to Dale Graham and, uh, and everyone else that's on the, the crew there that, that puts the uh, farmer's market together. The first two weekends, it looked like it was a really good turnout. And, uh, I know I enjoyed it, I'm sure a whole bunch of other people did as well. So thank you, Dale, and to everyone else that helped put it on. Great turnout. Mr. Lincoln, we need your honor. Hold that thought for just a second. One second. Mr. Briggs. Um, I will be out of the office Thursday attending a funeral. Which day? Thursday. Okay. Yours? Um, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not mine. Good to be. All right. Any other questions or comments before we move on? You thought that I had? There we go. Let's, let's, you want to do it one more time? Um, Come here. Let's adjourn.